Welcome to Raccoon City is very faithful to the games. This is not an action movie, this is a horror movie with action in it. I grew up on the video games and I, and I watched the movies and now being part of it is kind of a dream come true. Every time I've stepped on set, it's been a joy. I've loved every second of it. Resident Evil, it's a video game staple. It's one of the pillars of my youth when it comes to video games. First horror video game, it's an originator of its type. This movie is the beginning of Resident Evil. This is where it all started. 1998, the iconic characters coming together and you will see how this great universe began. It's a lot of fun and a lot of thrills and a lot of chills. <laughs> The tone of the movie, I really wanted it to be dark and scary, but not grim. I'm a huge John Carpenter fan. I'm a huge Stephen King fan. And I really wanted to bring those horror influences into this Resident Evil world. And you can really see it. There's a playfulness behind the dark scariness. What we've tried to do with the franchise as well is inject a lot more of the humor from the original games um, and those kind of light moments. Should we, should we call someone? Who are you gonna call? You're the police. While still keeping the intensity of the journey and the characters and the story of the characters as well. When casting the movie, it was really important to find people that could bring each of these characters to life. As a kid growing up playing the games, I was so pumped to play a character that I grew up wanting to be like. He's this badass stars officer. You know, you get to be an action hero, but at the same time, this script has heart and has humor. This is really nice, but I think I broke some ribs. And you get to bring a real side to a character that you've really only seen in video games. Robbie's been just amazing. He looks identical to his character. He looks like a bloody action hero. It's ridiculous, like the most handsome thing ever. It's almost annoying. But he's really funny and sweet, and yeah, we've gotten on really well. In the pit scene, he pelts me with a foam football, and he's supposed to like hit around me or whatever. The last take, he nailed me in the face Whoa. by accident. So that was fun. That's all right. All right. Oh, bro, you okay. What, something him? Yeah. <laughs> there definitely is a great sense of responsibility portraying a character that people know and love because you're aware of what it means to them. But I also think that it's important as an actor to be able to put that to one side and just do your best. Kaya's awesome. She's super talented, smart, collaborative, super easy to work with. Made having our brother-sister chemistry that much easier. You must be the rookie. My introduction to Leon probably was Resident Evil 4. I played it all the time. It was like the game. It was cool to come back to these games I loved as a kid and to play them and look at behavior from Leon in the games, physical behavior, and sort of mimic and match that as an actor and try to give new life to that. Avin to me is like my little brother on the set. I adore him. He's quirky and artsy and, and funny and silly and he's kind of been the one that I've spent the most time with. I'm Jill Valentine. Jill's a very, very tough cookie. What would the worst way to die be? To be swallowed whole by a snake or eaten alive by a great white shark? You're a freak, Valentine. I read the script and I just was so pumped. I was so psyched to play this character because she's just so badass. <laughs> Wesker, we are going on a more humanistic side of him. We're seeing who he really is underneath the sunglasses. I want to bring the human out of this guy. We wanted to see that moral dilemma that he goes through. Even though he's doing all this for selfish reasons and he's betraying them, he's not fundamentally a bad guy. Tom's awesome until you're standing beside him. That's the worst. He's enormous. His arms are like tree trunks. I'm in pretty good shape. And then you stand beside Tom and you're like, God, I wish I had sleeves. We got so lucky. Our cast is so great, and I think it's gonna show on screen. We're all friends, and these characters are all close and have known each other forever, so it was really important that worked out for us. If you played the games, you know that these movies should be a little bit scary, and Johannes is the right guy for this. Working with Johannes is great. He's a horror filmmaker through and through. He's such a gamer himself, and because he's got such passion with Resident Evil and this project, it's been really fun. And sometimes when I go behind the monitor and see what's been shot, it looks incredible. He's really, really nailed the genre of horror. Oh, 
There's always an advantage when you're working with a filmmaker who's also the scriptwriter because they start directing day one of the project. And they think about the way they're writing the scene and how they're going to edit it and how this aspect is going to play into this aspect. So the through lines lace all together in a really cohesive way. He's super collaborative. He allows us to be a part of building of the scenes beforehand. He was so willing to let us try things and be free. So as an actor, that's a gift, you know, and that came from the top as well, from all the producers and everything. They wanted us to feel really free to be able to play and try stuff. This movie was, without a doubt, the hardest movie of my career to make. It was entirely shot at night, pretty much all in a small town about four hours outside Toronto called Sudbury, which is this little mining town, and I fell in love with it. It represented the movie I wanted to make, but it was pretty hard to shoot out there. We had to bring everybody there and, and live out there for several months, and we were shooting minus 10. You know, the rain machines were freezing, and it was tough, it was grueling. You kind of end up turning into a zombie yourself, or a vampire, because you kind of don't see the daylight anymore. It's a zombie movie, it's a Resident Evil movie. You need it to be a little wet, and a little scary, and a little dirty and I think it shows the movie looks unbelievable. I'm always trying to stay physically prepped for these things because you never know what situation you're going to be thrown in and topping up on the weapons training is always really important, especially when you're playing like a tactical officer in a police force. It's important to know what that gun feels like and it's like second nature. I didn't have to learn any new weapons when it comes to gun training, stunts. I've had a lot of experience of that in my career, but I've had to learn how to actually look at a zombie and not be terrified. I have a big fight scene that was choreographed by an amazing stunt team. I got to do the entire thing myself, which is always really fun. Multiple weapons, an MP5, a 9mm, a knife. It was my action star moment come to life, which is just really cool. Getting to shoot the rocket launcher is pretty cool. When you think about like, hey, I want to become an actor. I wonder what cool things I'll be able to do. Shooting a rocket launcher is pretty up there. Found it in first class. Audiences are going to be able to go into this movie and get what they want out of a horror-based Resident Evil movie. All the sort of building blocks that the game built as a foundation, we sort of expand upon all those ideas. So there's the scenes that the video game audience will really enjoy, but I think even outside of it, if you haven't played the video games, it just functions as a really good horror film. I would be surprised if you walked out of the cinema and didn't want to go play the games, because it's like a dipping your toe into a much larger, really fun world to be in. Ah!